Okay, I'm going to begin here by discussing the generic process that we describe by the phrase electrophilic aromatic substitution. Okay, and this equation right here is in fact electrophilic aromatic substitution. This is where we take a simple compound, like as shown here, just good old benzene. Okay. All right, that kind of sucks, but we'll get better at this as we go along. Okay, benzene is going to react with an undefined electrophile shown here. And what happens here is the electrophile attacks the benzene ring kind of the way it would attack an alkene. And this generates a new carbocation that you see right here. Okay. This new carbocation then loses this hydrogen right here and regenerates the aromatic ring. Okay, so in this case, we could just say minus H plus, minus H plus. That doesn't look very good there, but as I say, we'll get better at this as we go along. Okay, this intermediate carbocation here is kind of an interesting species. If you just looked at it, all by itself, you'd probably say, hey, this is a pretty good carbocation, right? Because it's stabilized by resonance. It's an allylic carbocation. Okay, so uh, if we wanted to, we could write a resonance structure where the carbocation is now right here. And we can write yet another resonance structure where we delocalize it over to here. So what you see relative to where E is, the carbocation is totally delocalized over the ortho and para positions relative to where E is. Okay, despite the greatness of this carbocation, there's something about it that really sucks as well. And that's how we got it. When we made this carbocation, what we did was we broke the aromaticity in a benzene ring. So when you look at this, okay, it's not aromatic. Okay, and because it's not aromatic, it is hard to form. Much harder to form than the corresponding steps uh, of electrophilic addition to an alkene usually. Okay, this step here is generally slow. And you can, might can imagine this step here is actually very fast. Okay, of course it's going to be fast. It regenerates a benzene ring. Okay, so let's look at some of the specific reactions. First we'll look at halogenation. Recall that alkenes like cyclohexene react with bromine to do this nice trans addition of bromine, uh, this reaction right here, okay? All right, again, uh, I'm getting the hang of this pin. All right, so this reaction works very well for bromine, but if you just take benzene and treat it with just plain old average everyday ordinary bromine, what happens is that you get no reaction. Okay, this is because the benzene ring, remember, is stabilized by uh, aromatic stabilization. Okay, you can, if you activate the bromine by throwing in a Lewis acid like FeBr3, you can get the reaction to proceed, but you don't get the uh, addition product, you get a substitution product. And byproducts here are H plus and FeBr4 minus. Okay, let's look at the mechanism for this reaction. What initially happens is a reaction between bromine and iron tribromide. So this forms a Lewis acid, Lewis base adduct right here. Now, this is a much better electrophile than just plain old bromine, and it's uh, so much better that it can actually attack the benzene ring now. It attacks the benzene ring and generates the carbocation, okay, right here, and then H plus is lost rapidly to produce the product 
bromobenzene, shown here. Okay, why don't we make this? What's wrong with this? Well, it turns out that this is really not the most thermodynamically favorable pathway for this reaction to go. And this product here, which is analogous to the one at the very top, the benzene ring, has been broken. Whereas, when you form the substitution product, the benzene ring is regenerated. And this is by far the more favorable pathway. Okay, uh, if we wanted to put chlorine in our molecule, uh, that would be fairly easy as well. We would just use uh, chlorine and uh, FeCl3 for the analogous chlorination. Iodination requires a much fancier recipe. We won't talk about that in this class. And uh, fluorination is somewhat difficult to control. Okay, the next reaction we're going to look at is nitration. And we take a benzene ring and treat it with uh, the reagent shown here. Nitric acid, sulfuric acid. We can generate nitrobenzene. We're usually going to see nitrobenzene written like this, but it's important to remember that this is what a nitro group actually is. A nitro compound is one of those compounds where it can't be drawn without putting a charge somewhere. Okay? All right, so this is uh, what a nitro group actually is. It's kind of, you'll see how it's important a little bit later on to remember that that plus, plus charge is actually right there. Okay, mechanistically, what happens in this reaction is that the interaction of nitric acid and sulfuric acid produces a, a key intermediate in this reaction, the nitronium cation. Okay, and that is shown right here. All right, the nitronium cation is, a, is the electrophilic species which attacks the benzene ring. And after attacking the benzene ring, we get the type of system that we've seen before. And this loses H plus to rapidly regenerate the benzene ring. A good way to remember this is whatever I have circled here is going to come in as or the E plus, the positively charged equivalent of that is what's usually going to be attacking the ring in these aromatic substitution reactions. And that's a good thing to remember. Okay, the next reaction we're going to look at is sulfonation. Here we take the combination of SO3, H2SO4. This is known as fuming sulfuric acid. And this produces a benzene sulfonic acid derivative here, which is uh, actually quite a strong acid, much stronger than a carboxylic acid. Mechanistically, what happens here is that SO3, or sulfuric anhydride, interacts with sulfuric acid to make this uh, positively, or this protonated SO3 derivative right here, okay? This is the electrophile that attacks the benzene ring. And you see, this is just SO3H plus. This is SO3H is what we're adding here. And it adds, it produces this intermediate carbocation, which rapidly loses H plus to afford the product. If you're noticing a bit of repetition here in the mechanism, congratulations. You've got this chapter all figured out. This is the mechanism for all of, all of the reactions in this chapter. There's a few little tricks about how you generate the species that's attacking the benzene ring to begin with, but basically it's just a general mechanistic type. Okay, the next one is the Friedel-Crafts alkylation, and there are a lot of details about the Friedel-Crafts reaction, or, uh, particularly the alkylation reaction, that we're going to get back to later. 
Okay, so in the Friedel, the most common form of the Friedel Crafts reaction, you see an alkyl halide and aluminum chloride react with a benzene ring to directly attach an R group to the benzene ring. A limitation in this reaction is that chlorine must be attached to sp3 carbon. We can't use things like bromobenzene or uh, ethyl chloride in this reaction. They won't work. Uh, so here we have the reaction with an actual R group defined. This is isopropyl. Isopropyl chloride, aluminum chloride, and benzene will react to make this compound isopropyl benzene. Okay, so let's look at the mechanism for this bottom reaction. The combination of the alkyl halide and the aluminum chloride makes a Lewis acid, Lewis base complex, shown here, which falls apart. In this case, this is a better, much better leaving group than chlorine itself is. And this generates the carbocation. The carbocation is the thing that's attacked by the benzene ring. This makes the, car uh, the uh, carbocation in the benzene ring, shown here. And then this loses H plus to eventually form the product. This is the most common form of the Friedel Crafts alkylation. However, there are lots of variants. In theory, any reaction that can generate a carbocation can start the Friedel Crafts reaction. So, for example, here, one methyl cyclohexene, benzene, and sulfuric acid would be expected to react to form this alkylated benzene ring shown here. Okay. Okay, now, how would this reaction go? Well, we need to make a carbocation, and the alkene is a much better electrophile than the benzene ring is. So sulfuric acid is initially reacting with the alkene to generate a carbocation. Several reactions that we saw in Chapter 6 or in the alkene section actually started this way. And uh, what happens here is that once this is generated, Okay, this reacts with the benzene. This makes the carbocation. You lose H plus and then form the eventual product. Okay, it's important to remember that all the things that we know and love about carbocations from the past are still good for this reaction. Carbocations can rearrange. For example, if we took isobutyl chloride shown here. And we attempted to do the Friedel Crafts reaction with isobutyl chloride. We would find that we've produced virtually no isobutyl benzene. Instead, we produced almost exclusively T butyl benzene. Okay? So T butyl benzene is shown here. How does T butyl benzene form out of this reaction? Well, this is a classical case of a carbocation rearrangement. Okay, so the primary carbocation that we initially generate, it's not certain that we actually generate a carbocation. This rearrangement could happen uh, along with the loss of uh, the uh, chlorine. But if ever generated, this would very rapidly do a, a one two shift of this hydrogen over to here and this would produce the T-butyl benzene as the major product. Of course, you recognize this as the tertiary butyl carbocation. So this carbocation would add to the benzene ring, and that would produce the product. Okay, the last of the general reaction types is the Friedel Crafts acylation reaction, shown here. And what happens in the Friedel Crafts acylation is that we take an acid chloride, aluminum chloride, and we add it to a benzene, react this with a benzene ring, and this makes an acyl benzene derivative, as shown here, a phenyl ketone, if you want, if you want to call it that. Okay, so in this one, I've made our isopropyl, and uh, this compound here would react with aluminum chloride and benzene to make this ketone that you see here. Mechanistically, the reaction is very similar to the Friedel Crafts acylation. We complex the chlorine with aluminum chloride, it leaves, and this makes another a new carbocation. 
This carbocation here is called the acelium ion. The acelium ion has a resonance form where there's now a carbon-oxygen triple bond and the positive charge is at oxygen. This is probably the better resonance form. Okay, because this is resonance stabilized, it doesn't rearrange and we'll see how that's important in the next slide. Okay, so the acelium cation once generated reacts with a benzene ring to make this intermediate carbocation of the type that we've seen before and this loses H plus to form the product. Okay, we can use this to our advantage. Here's a common synthesis issue. How would we convert benzene to n-butyl benzene? The most obvious answer to use the Friedel-Crafts reaction, alkylation reaction isn't going to work, right? Because if we ever took this compound, shown here, it would never work because it would require a primary carbocation that would want to rearrange to a secondary carbocation. And the likely major product of this reaction is secbutylbenzene, shown here. Okay, so we can now actually use the Friedel-Crafts acylation to carry this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take N-butyl chloride, and if you are a real critic here, you'll notice that I drew an extra carbon. So let's remember that that ain't there. One, two, three, four. Yes, an aluminum chloride. This generates this ketone here, but we have uh, the ability to actually convert C double bond O to CH2 using either of these reagents here is uh, zinc amalgam and aqueous HCl is the Clemenson reduction and hydrazine aqueous base and heat is the Wolf-Kishner reduction which are discussed in later sections of the class. This would produce the n-butyl benzene because you're putting the alkyl group on as uh, through the Friedel-Crafts acylation, you don't have to worry about rearrangements. And you, once you have this, you can then reduce it to afford the observed product. Okay, here's a mechanism problem I would like you to do. What you should do now, if you're doing this in front of your computer, is pause it. Try to do your do it yourself, and then look at my answer. Okay, so here's what is likely happening in this reaction. We're protonating the alkene, not the benzene ring, first, and this is making the carbocation. The carbocation is now part of the same molecule as the benzene ring, so when it attacks the benzene ring, it's what we call an intramolecular reaction. Okay, so the intramolecular attack sets up the five-membered ring. We have the carbocation at this position. It's important to remember that the carbocation is where the alkyl group originally was. It loses H plus to afford the product. Okay, and I have it shown here having the sulfuric acid counter ion removing the H plus, but I think in most of your exams I would likely not count off for just losing H+. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video right here and uh, we're going to restart it.